In this video, I'm taking a crusty K5 blazer and I'm making it a little bit more presentable with a cheap paint job and some other low budget tricks. This is a 1987 Chevy Blazer. This one's a four wheel drive. This thing is a little bit rough around the edges. Somebody had rattle can this thing just with flat black spray paint and they didn't tape anything up. So the glass had overspray on it. The bumpers had overspray. Every piece of trim, everything had black overspray on it. So just a matter of taking like a SOS pad to the glass, cleaning all the overspray off, that helped tremendously. Then I cleaned all the interior out washed it, cleaned the rubber mat, armor all it, got it really slicked up good, and started thinking about what I was going to do for the rest of the appearance as far as the paint. Because the spray can paint job just didn't please me, and no matter how much you cleaned on this thing, it just didn't look good. So I wanted to freshen it up a little bit. So to get that process started, I went ahead and ordered me some new tail lights off of Amazon. They were $14, and they're cheap. They don't fit very well but they're shiny and new and they filled up the hole, so that's all that mattered. Um, I also bought some tailgate straps. Those were also cheap, but they do the job. Also got those off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below for these various parts that I used on this truck. Uh, I had to buy a headlight bezel. One of them was cracked, so I bought one and I ended up taking the other one off and repainted. That got that looking good. Now the paint that I'm using is Rust-Oleum and it's oil-based enamel. And this is not the type of stuff you'd normally use on an automotive application. This is for household purposes, you know, painting fence posts or who knows what. And this stuff lays down so good. I've used it on several projects. You know, you can just scuff and shoot this stuff on just about anything and it'll stick. So, you know, if I'd wanted to just do a quick scuff and shoot, this would have literally been, you know, one evening of sanding and then the next day I could have painted it. It had a few problem areas that I wanted to address. So I spent a little more money than what you might normally spend. I had to buy some Bondo. I had to buy some additional sandpaper like 80 grit. Um, had to buy some primer to cover up my Bondo and all that kind of stuff. Now, in my case, I actually sanded most of this thing with 220 grit. Again, most out automotive paints, you don't want to go that rough with it. But this stuff, you can make quick work with it with 220 and have this thing ready to paint in no time. Then it was just a matter of taping the thing up and getting it ready to actually put some paint on it. Now, I will tell you that it's a little bit fragile. Any kind of satin paint like this is fragile. It's gonna scratch easily. It's gonna water spot easily. You know, if you let this thing sit out in the rain and the rainwater dries up, it's probably gonna leave some water spots. That's just the nature of flat black. But in our case, it didn't really matter. This is just a cheap truck and a cheap paint job. It was about 30 bucks for the paint and about another $20 for the acetone, which is used to thin it. I ended up buying way too much acetone, but that's fine, I can use it on other projects. You can also use it to clean your gun out and stuff like that, so it does come in handy to have some around the shop. But essentially what you're gonna do is thin this paint with the acetone and you're gonna use like a two to one ratio. Now I just eyeball it, my dad has always eyeballed it, we just kind of pour a little bit and stir, pour a little bit and stir, and you finally get kind of where you want it to be. But in most cases, you could say two to one is a good fair ratio. So let's say you pour 10 ounces of your paint into a mixing cup, then you're gonna pour five ounces of the reducer or your, your acetone in there to thin it. And that should get you in the ballpark. Now, one thing that I do that's not necessarily on the instructions of this paint, I actually splash a little bit of acrylic enamel hardener into the mixture. I don't have a real number on that, but just like a little splash of it is plenty. And that just helps this stuff dry a little bit quicker because otherwise this stuff will stay soft for quite a while. And if you're wanting to kind of work on the car or truck or whatever, you know, you want that stuff to kind of get a good hard shell on it so that you're not digging into it or gouging it or anything like that. So. That's the idea as far as mixing it. Two to one ratio, a little splash of hardener, and you should be good to go. In my case, I'm using a Harbor Freight, just one of those cheap purple guns. It's got a 1.4 millimeter tip on it. And then when it comes to painting it, you know, I made sure to wear a respirator, but the good thing about this stuff is that it's really pretty thick paint and it doesn't really provide a lot of overspray. When you're spraying like a urethane paint job or clear, the whole room will be fogged over. Like you won't be able to see or breathe or anything. It's really hard 
to paint something like that. But with this stuff, I mean, it really just, everything that comes out of the gun goes right onto the vehicle. It doesn't blow up a bunch of overspray. So it comes out thick. It goes on like terrible. It looks terrible when you first paint it on there because it's shiny and you can see every imperfection. You can see every speck of trash that comes out or gets trapped under the paint. You can see it all. It looks awful. But as this stuff dries, it looks better and better and better. So in our case, I made it all the way around the truck. You know, that required four or five different fill-ups in my 20 ounce cup. Made it all the way around the truck and then we took a break for a good while. We let this stuff sit. And obviously that depends on your temperature. If it's 90 degrees outside, it's gonna dry faster. If it's 50 degrees outside, it's gonna take a while. And in our case, you know, we let this stuff go ahead and flash off pretty good. Like we let it go ahead and start turning flat. And then we went back with a second coat and that really made this thing look good. Again, as we're putting it on there, it looks terrible. It's shiny and bumpy and lumpy and it's just bad. But once this thing starts drying, it really starts taking shape. And then, you know, a couple hours later, it looks like brand new. It looks amazing. This stuff lays down like you wouldn't believe. So by the time I bought Bondo, primer, paint, acetone, sandpaper, tape, all that kind of stuff, and the few parts I bought for it, I probably had $200 tied up in freshening this truck's appearance. And it was worth every penny because it brought this thing from you know a $2,500 truck to a $4,500 truck. And this thing sold immediately. As soon as we rolled it out of the garage, it sold the same day. So I probably priced a little too cheap, but quick money is the best kind for me. So, you know, I didn't have to fool with a bunch of tire kickers. The guy that came and bought this thing paid cash and he was gone. You know, if you like this type of video, I can go into much more detail on how to mix the paint, how to spray the paint. You know, I can do sort of a how-to on this. So just uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna do. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you for watching.